we're here with a bonus episode of Marketing Against the Grain with the Sleeper Chat GPT feature of 2024. Now, I know it's early in the year, but this feature is going to 10x the power of custom GPTs, 10x the power of the GPT store, and you do not want to miss it as it is super exciting. And we wanted to bring it to you as quick as possible. So let's get into today's show. All right, so the GPT store has been about for... Uh, maybe a month now, uh, depending upon where you live. I live in Europe. I think I've said that a lot of times on the podcast. So I do not get access to these things at the same time as everyone else. But let's quickly dive into what the store looks like. All right, so let's dive in. So this is the store, right? You can click in, you go to Explore GPTs, you see your store, it's nicely categorized. And uh, it's pretty cool. Like it, ha it has broken into featured. And then I think at some point, if this does become popular, you can imagine this being a pretty nice place for them to get some paid advertising going. And then you have trending. Uh, and so you have some of the more popular custom GPTs here. Canva, some of the some of the company ones have really ha managed to kind of get some traction here. Canva, one of the examples. But I haven't seen a lot of brands actually with custom GPTs or GPTs here that are getting a ton of traction. And so there's a couple of challenges with the GPT store and I can show you them. Uh, I can go through them now, right? So first of all, why is the app store so successful? Well, part of it is because the iPhone became so successful, the smartphones become so successful, but there's also a barrier to entry for the app store, right? Like it does take some amount of effort to create an app and get it onto the app store. I think one of the challenges with the GPT store, and we're going into the new feature, this is all the setup for the new feature because I think this unlocks a lot of this power, but I wanna kind of give the setup and the current problems. Like it's just too easy to create a custom GPT and launch it on the store, which means it's really hard to find like the good ones, right? Uh, I think that's why they have trending for the most part, right? You can actually sift through a bunch of the noise to get the ones that are pretty, pretty good. Um, but in general, that's a problem for them, which is there's ten to, tens of thousands of these custom GPTs because it's pretty easy to create um, to create them. It's also littered with just pretty underwhelming custom GPTs. And most of them are underwhelming because people are just giving it a set of pre-programmed instructions and then just sit, asking it to do things. So like quote generators or you're a marketing instructor, but the marketing instructor is just giving it some pre-programmed instructions Like you are a marketing professor. This is how you think about marketing. These are your inspirational marketers. And when people ask you questions, lean into these inspirational mar marketers and answer that in that way. That is really no different than what ChatGPT could do because they're both trained on the internet. And if you do not have propriety data or something that makes that custom GPT unique, then it's kind of underwhelming, right? Um, but uh, the UX experience is also a problem. And this is one of the things I want to get into because I feel like it's where the unlock is going to come. So so when you're using these custom GPTs, what happens is you uh, click to, to use them and then you can actually start to use them there on your left-hand panel here. So let's um, you end up with a bunch of different custom GPTs based upon what you actually want to do. So let's say I want to do quotes and I could say, hey, like we all love a good quote, like get, uh, I think there's a pre, uh, why don't we do this one? Create an image uh, about hope. Who doesn't want to have hope in today's precarious world, right? is a good thing to have. Um, so it's going to create this image for us. And let's say I want to use that image in a presentation. Like presentation is a really good use case of GPTs. I think people struggle with presentations, especially internal presentations, but it's a pretty great use case if we can perfect uh, an AI agent to help us with these presentations. So let's say I get, oh, I love this quote. I want to do a whole presentation for Kip about hope because we want to both be optimist marketers. Well, now I have to like take this and then go over to another tool. Let's say I use the Canva tool and pay, copy and paste that quote into the tool to be able to use it. Now, I've asked Canva to you know create a slide to help marketers feel hopeful about AI because we do, right? Um, but if I wanted to use any of these other custom GPTs to get quote or research or anything like this to be able to use in uh, a presentation GPT like Canva, I have to kind of flip between them and it's really, really annoying, right? And because 
you don't have a single interface which chat GBT kind of knows what custom GBT is the best GBT for the job. I think if it actually did do that, it's problematic because it will mean that the store isn't of any great value because chat GPT would pick what custom GPT to, to actually use. And so what's the point in having this store where you can browse and look through features and look through trending if you don't even really need it. So there's Canva. It's produced me this kind of cool slide so we can feel optimistic about the future. What does it say here? I'm on my t artificial intelligence will transform the world, but it's up to us to decide how awesome. Um, okay. So that's the Canva one. So what is the feature that I'm excited about that will actually, I think really unlock some of the powers here in terms of some of the powers of custom GPTs. Okay. So I want to bring up a video from Dan Shipper, who is the CEO and co-founder of a company called every, a really great company with tons of great newsletters and tons of great media, but also very deep into the AI shares a ton of great stuff about AI. And he had this great video. I was, uh, in, I spent this morning looking through, you know, how to manage and optimize human kind of books. Cause I'm having a baby in the next 24 to 48 hours. And I came across this video because I'm also a dork and I got distracted and I was like, hey, what's happened in the world of AI? Because, you know, that's where my brain goes, which probably isn't a good thing. But I saw this video and I was like, wow, this is super cool. So I'm going to play you some of the video and then I'm going to stop it to give you some of the commentary on why this is such an incredible new feature being launched by OpenAI for ChatGPT. Okay, so I'm going to play you some of the video uh, and then I'm going to tell you why this is so cool. So let's play this video. And this is just regular ChatGPT4. Regular so ChatGPT4. So uh, here's here's an example. Maybe I'm writing a journal entry in ChatGPT, right? Uh, and I want to save it to Notion. Um, so what I can do is let's just get a journal entry. All right. So he gets the journal there. entry. Uh, let's go through this. Entry. Uh, yes. Let's go to this part. Um, I just wrote. So I'm just going to give it to ChatGPT, right? Okay, he's doing the journal entry. Let's get to this into, part. Uh, into Notion over here. What I can do instead is I can do at Notion GPT. And this is Notion GPT is, is a little uh, uh, GPT I built. It's custom GPT, uses uh, Zapier to connect to into my Notion. And so what I can do is say, hey, can you uh, summarize the journal entry above and um, put it okay. into my journal? All right. So like, what is he doing? He has gone to get a journal entry. He writes a lot. He has built a custom GPT through AI actions with Zapier that hooks into your notion and can take this information and automate putting it into notion for him. So, right. There's a couple of things going on here, right? He gets the journal entry and then he calls a custom GPT that he has created. Now the custom GPT is also far better than most things that people are creating because it does something that isn't just rehashing what ChatGPT can already do. He uses something called, he uses something that Zapier we have launched, which is AI Actions, which actually allows you to plug these custom GPTs into your software. In this case, Dan has created one for Notion. And what it does is it takes the input, takes the data from ChatGPT and sends it to Notion to create a journal entry for him or to create an entry within a table. So you can see he calls it here just by adding the custom GPT and then ask it to summarize the journal entry. Why is this freaking sick? Um, you can now create custom GPTs that can do things in software for you and you can call them like you can call, you can at an employee or a colleague or someone on Slack, right? So now you can really have custom AI agents built through custom GPTs and you can actually have them using something, you can use in Zapier AI actions to be able to actually do real things in software. In this case, Dan, in a very short amount of time, built a workflow to be able to take things that he's brainstorming with chat GPT, these kind of journal entries. And you, I skipped past the part where he added imagery and other things to that journal entry. And then he just calls, he adds the notion GPT, and then he be, is able to use AI actions from Zapier to send that into notion to create a journal entry. What is so cool about this? You can actually add these custom GPTs in your core interface. You do not have to go clicking around on the left-hand panel, cutting and pasting things across these different GPTs. 
Now you have a central interface where you can use these custom GPTs, just like you have a bunch of different employees in Slack, right? You can app them and say, could you do this thing? Can you do this thing? And these custom GPTs are programmed to do specific tasks for you. This is bringing the future to life where we actually have AI agents who can do specific things for us. And they are kind of like, somewhat like employees of some sort, like they they can actually help us do our work. I think in the future in your Slack or wherever it may be, you will probably have people you converse with uh, who are humans and at them and people who are AI agents and at them. And I, this is really powerful for custom GPTs because now you can build things and use them day to day without having to try to context switch between these things in the kind of ch uh, chat GPT interface. And so that is huge. I really think that is going to make the chat GPT store much more powerful as you integrate these things into your core chat GPT workflow. The other thing is Dan has built a really great actual custom GPT with a really great use case that is not like most of the custom GPTs that were built, which are really just poor knockoffs of things you can already do in chat GPT. Again, if you're just doing something and creating a chat GPT where you're using custom instructions to do something that you can basically already do in chat GPT. Like you have no proprietary data. It's not hooked into your software in any kind of meaningful way. It's not that valuable. Um, and so this is really important. Like he builds one through AI actions with Zapier that allows him to automate work in Notion. And if you go right to the end uh, to the video, you'll see that the journal entries now exist, right? So like, let's just cover Jan's, uh, Dan's reaction to this. All right, it says it's been added. That is friggin' sick. Um, except it doesn't have the it doesn't have the image, but right, friggin' sick. This thing makes these custom GPTs much more powerful. Um, being able to use them in your core chat GPT interface, being able to actually pre-program them with instructions on how to do things in your software via Sapier. This to me is a really great feature. It's a sleeper feature. It might not get a ton of press, but I actually think this is a game changer for how we feel about custom GPTs in the GPT store. That's Dan, the CEO and the co-founder of a great company called Every uh, Media Company, lots of great newsletters. So this to me is the unlock, right? Like the first version of all of the custom GPTs created in the GPT store, I've tried a lot of them. Most of them are terrible. They suck. They're really just things you can already do in chat GPT. This is an ex example of how you can both create a custom GPT with real actionable um, use cases. And then the UX experience has really been solved because you can just add that custom GPT and call it in the core chat GPT interface. You're not having to flick between the different things in the right in the left-hand panel. So this to me is the sleeper feature because what we're really going to be able to do is customize chat GPT to our needs through all of these custom GPTs. And we're going to have an army of AI agents to be able to do work on our behalf because we can use AI actions from Zapier to automate our work, to automate things that we do each and every day. This is the sleeper feature. Do not sleep on it. Do try it when it is out. I have uh, I have hope that I would get it today the same time as Dan, but again, I am not in the US. You are all so lucky to get these things before me. You should go check it out, try it, build a custom GPT, add it in your chat GPT interface, do some cool work. Uh, I hope this is a cool bonus episode and you found it as exciting and uh, as interesting as I did. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history, calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot, grow better.